Alrighty, welcome back everyone. I am Blaze here. Today's video is all 16 EverQuest classes explained, considering through the classic two Planes of Power expansions. Before I begin, I want to give a special thank you to all the members of Midnight Rations, my guild on Mangler, who helped me get all this footage. And also, I want to thank all the people who attended the live stream to help me populate all the information in this video. There was a lot of stuff that I missed, and the people who came to the stream, they helped fill in the gaps. So thank you so much to everyone who came out, and I'm going to leave a link to that live stream in the corner of the screen. The Warrior Class The primary role of a warrior is just to tank. They don't have that great soloing ability in terms of groups. If you don't have a tank, they're desirable, but they are not the best grouping tank. In terms of raids though, they are the best tank for raids. The main con of them is that they're very gear dependent. And some of the special talents that they have. They have the highest hit point and armor class caps out of anybody. They also have disciplines, this is why they're huge on raids. They have disciplines that can significantly reduce the amount of damage that they take relative to the other tank classes. And as well, they have this special ability that when they get low on health, they have an increased chance to do critical hits. They go berserk. The Paladin class. The Paladin primarily functions as a tank and as well as somewhat of a backup healer. They have low soloing ability. In terms of groups, they are desired if there's no other tanks, but again, they're sort of middle of the pack. But they offer more utility than warriors do. In terms of raids, they're very desired especially around Lukelin and Post, because they become the best off tank from a hammer that they can get that lets them proc Divine Aura or Invulnerability. Their major con is that they're very gear dependent and some of their special talents. They're very strong against Undead. They are one of only three classes in the game that have a Resurrection ability. They have a special ability called Lay on Hands, which is sort of an emergency heal. And of course, the invulnerability hammer come Lupin. The Shadow Knight class. Now this is the last major tank class in the game. They also can function as a puller and a minor DPS class. They have moderate soloing ability. They can fear kite. And for groups, if you had a choice between warrior, paladin, or SK, SKs are actually probably the most desirable group tank as they can hold aggro a lot easier than most other classes and they add more damage to more DPS. And on raids, they are of a moderate desirability. They do have strong off tanking capabilities, but they just don't take damage as well as warriors do. And they don't provide as much utility as what a paladin can do. The major con of a Shadow Knight is that they're very gear dependent. They are one of three classes that have a feign death ability. They have a huge nuke out of harm touch. They have a buff in Lukelin, an after that can significantly boost aggro generation of whoever they put it on. And they are one of two classes that have the ability to summon corpses. The Magician class. The primary roles of a Magician is that they're a major DPS class and that they can use their pet to off tank on occasion. They have high soloing ability because of their pets. They're very desirable in groups and they're also very desirable on raids. The main limitations of Magician, though, are their mana regeneration capabilities, and on raids with raid targets that have Mitigation of the Mighty, all the aggro that's generated from the pet gets transferred to the pet owner. So Magicians have a hard time of managing their threat generation. Their special abilities, they're the ultimate summoning item class. They can summon Moderats to help people out to get more mana, they can also summon pet weapons and pet items to make pets stronger. They can also summon special focus effect gears. Call of the Hero makes them invaluable on raids because you can skip hours of clearing raid content in certain zones, clearing trash content that is. They have the best damage shield buff in the game. Their pet DPS is strong and in Planes of Power they actually are able to charm elementals and they are only one of two classes in the game that have Malo, which is a resist debuff. The Ranger class. Rangers, they function as a DPS class. Now how good they are at it depends on the expansion. 
They can also function as an off tank and as a puller. Rangers have moderate soloing ability. They can kite and they can root rot. In terms of groups, they are low to moderate in desirability. Once the Lucklin expansion comes around with their archery AAs, Rangers DPS capabilities significantly boost up and their desirability goes up. And on raids, their high desirability, especially going into that archery time period of Lucklin and Planes of Power, because they can go so far back away from raid mobs that they can completely avoid most AoEs and they don't need to be healed to the same degree and they provide a very consistent stream of DPS. Their main cons. Of all the four classes that have taunt, rangers are the least survivable, but they have arguably just as easy of a time to hold aggro as a shadow knight does. And the other con is they're really the butt of many jokes. <laughs> and they're the main death touch takers early on in the first couple of expansions. The main talents of a ranger, they have an exclusive line of attack buffs, they have the best tracking ability in the game, they also have a discipline called weapon shield that lets them essentially take no damage from the front for a certain time period, it lets them off tank quite easily. They're the only class that really makes use of archery that is, and they have a run speed buff. The berserker class. Now this is outside the scope of the video because it's technically only going to planes of power and the berserker class gets added after that, but I still wanted to mention it. So Gates of Discord is the expansion that's added after planes of power and lost dungeons of Norath. The best way to understand them is they're like a rogue that doesn't have sneak and hide and they use two handers. Their solo ability is relatively low, group desirability, moderate, raid desirability is high. And their special talents, they have an exclusive attack line buff, and they have some AAs that let them get special throwing weapons that can have unique effects like a stun and snare. But I wasn't able to find a lot of information about this class, so if you guys disagree with what I put here, please put it in the comments. I'd actually like to know. There's not a whole lot about this class. The Cleric. The Cleric primarily serves as a healer, support, and they can even tank in planes of power and afterwards. Clerics have low soloing ability unless you're talking about undead mobs. Clerics are very desirable in raids and in groups. The main issues with clerics though are their mana regeneration and how much aggro that they build from heals. The special talents of clerics, they have the most mana efficient healing in the game. They have the best resurrection at 96% and their epic is a mana free res, so very little downtime. They have the best HP and armor class buffs in the game. They have Divine Intervention, which is if you die, you have a chance to not die. It's a, sort of a do-over. They have multiple invulnerabilities. That actually makes them very desirable for power leveling groups. And they're very strong against undead. The Druid class. Druids function as healers, a traveling class, support, and minor DPS. Minor to middle DPS. Druids have high soloing capabilities. They can kite and they can do root rotting. In terms of group desirability, if you have no other healer, then druids are wanted, but they're the least preferred healer. If you had a choice of cleric and shaman, druid, druid's gonna be picked last. Raid desirability is high, especially in the first couple expansions. The main cons of druids is that they have weak heals starting out and their mana regeneration is quite limited. Their special talents, they're only one of two classes that can port, they have run speed buffs, and they can evac. They have the tracking ability, they can do some decent DPS with animal charms. They are one of only three classes in the game that have a static mana regeneration buff called Protection of the Glades. They have an AoE AA that can do a huge mass hit point regeneration bonus. And they're arguably the best power leveling class in the game, Shaman. Shamans primarily function as a healer, a debuffer, and a support class. For soloing ability, there's an argument of whether they're the second to third best solar in the game. They can handle some content that's incredibly difficult. They're very desirable in groups and they're very desirable on raids. The main issues with shamans though is they have a lot of aggro generation from their slows and from mallow and they're gear dependent. And prior to group-wide and raid-wide buffs, 
they are horrendous to play on raids because of having to individually buff all raid members. Their special talents, they're only one of two classes that have Mallow, and they have the best slow in the game. They're the only class that can do Alchemy. They have the Cannibalization line that converts their hit points to mana. They're one of two classes in the game that have Shrink. And their buffs stack with Clerics. And they also have a Spirit of the Wolf line. They also have a Run Speed buff. They're actually the first class that actually gets a Run Speed buff. The Wizard class. The Wizard has two main roles. They are a major DPS class. And they also help out with travel. They have high soloing ability with kiting and just flat out annihilating mobs with a big burn of a nuke. Group desirability, it's variable. In general, they're not very desired unless you're talking about AoE groups. Then they're very desired because they have the best AoE nukes in the game. And on raids, they're very desirable. The main limitations of wizard are their mana regeneration and how much aggro they build with their nukes. They have issues with consistently putting out DPS and the resists of the mob that they're trying to hit. They're dependent upon debuffers. The special talent of wizards include them being only one of two classes in the game that can do ports, and they have exclusive ports to Plane of Sky and Plane of Hate, and they are consistently the number one caster DPS in the game, especially for short fights. The Necromancer class. Necromancers primarily function as a major DPS class, but over long-term fights, whereas wizards are short-term. Necromancers have high souling ability. They're either ranked number two or number three, depending if a shaman is geared or not. They can be very desirable in groups, but typically because of misconceptions, they're not wanted that much. But a well-played necro can actually be very desirable. You have to make a name for yourself with this class. On raids, they're very desirable. The main limitation of a necro is that if they try to do DPS by their dots, it's really too slow for short fights. But if they can charm, it really compensates for that speed issue. Necromancers are only one of three classes in the game with Feign Death. They're only one of three with the Resurrection ability, but theirs uses a reagent. It's not free. And they're one of two classes with a Corpse Summon. They also arguably have the best mana regeneration buff in the game, but it's self only. They also can give their mana to other people. And they're one of three classes in the game that have a Mez ability. Now it fades off quick, but it can work in a pinch. The Enchanter class. In the stream, this class is just said overpowered. That's all that needs to be said. Enchanters primarily function as a crowd control, support, and major DPS class. They are either ranked number one or number two in terms of soloing ability. They are very high in group desirability. They're actually the only class you would really want more than one of in a group. Raid desirability, they're high, but the main limitations of Enchanter are that they die very easily. They also build aggro like no other because they're crowd controlling, tashes, and mitigation of the mighty from charm pets. And having to deal with other people Coordinating with other people in terms of mez and charm breaks is often an issue. The special talents of Enchanter, they're only one of three classes in the game that have a mana regeneration buff they can cast on other people. They are the only AoE mezzer at this point in time, but one of three classes in the game that can mez. They have the best haste buff, they are the best charming class, they're the only class that has Tash, which is a magic resist debuff, and they have slows, and they're really the only class that you want to do jewel crafting with. The Beast Lord class. This class is added in the Shadows of Lucan expansion, sort of a cross between a shaman and a monk. They mainly function as a support class and they have some buffs. Their soloing ability is moderate, and they're desired in groups. They can actually function as a tank in a pinch, and they also are quite desirable on raids. The main issue with Beast Lords though are their aggro generation and their pet aggro transferring to them for mitigation of the mighty on raid targets. The special talents, they have an ability called Paragon, which is a temporary boost to hit point and mana regeneration, and they can do it raid wide with mass group buff, which is a huge help. It's, it's a lifesaver on raids. They are only one of three classes in the game with a static mana regeneration buff. They're one of two that can shrink. They have slows, and they have a unique attack buff bonus line called Savagery. 
the Bard class, my own personal favorite. Bards primarily function as a puller, a crowd control class, and a support class. There's sort of a jack of all trades that takes traits from many different classes. Their soloing ability is high. How fast they kill mobs, it really depends on how much mana they're burning. They're very desirable in groups, and they're very desirable in raids. Every single raid group wants a bard in it. The main limitations of bard, though, are their mana regeneration abilities. There's very few means of which bards can regenerate mana quicker. They are poor DPS, and they're very intensive to play if you're going to be manually twisting. It can actually really lead to some wrist pain. The special talents of bards, they have a short-term mana regeneration buff. They are one of three classes in the game that have mezes. Really, they're the only ones that compete with enchanters in terms of crowd controlling ability. In Planes of Power, they have an ability called Fading Memories, which lets them drop all aggro, so much like a feign death, but even better because they don't have to wait for aggro to leash. Bards also have some of the best haste effects in the game. They're actually the only one in this time period that can give overhaste. And on that overhaste song, it can add a 15% bonus to dot and nuke damage. So it helped melees and casters simultaneously with one song. They have the best resists for raids, and they bring huge damage shields. They have the fastest run speed in the game, they have magic resist debuffs, and they also have disarm traps and pick lock. The Rogue class. They are a major DPS class, and they can serve as a really good corpse dragger. They have low soloing ability, don't even try. <laughs> low group desirability and on raids they're moderate the main limitations of rogues are really just their weapons they're a very weapon dependent class and it's especially noticeable in classic but gets better in kunark once they get their epic and they also require good positioning their main dps comes from the backstab ability which requires them to be behind the target the special talents of a rogue they can use sneak and hide and move with it they have disarm traps and pick lock. They have an AA ability called Shroud of Stealth, which can let them go and to almost nearly everything. They have poison trade skill lines, and they have arguably the easiest epic in the game to do. The Monk class. Monks primarily serve as a major DPS class, and they are a very solid puller. Arguably the best raid pulling class until bards get fading memories and planes of power. They have moderate souling abilities, they're very desirable in groups, and they are very desirable on raids. They are consistently the top melee DPS class. The main limitations of a monk, though, are that they lose armor class based upon how much weight is in their inventory, and they don't wear high mitigation armor. They mainly wear leather and cloth. They also can build a lot of aggro because they're DPS. And they're limited in race options, especially starting out. You only have human as the only option. And then you get Ixar and Kunar, but it's just two. Their special talents, they are only one of three classes in the game that have Feign Death. But monks have this special advantage in that their Feign Death doesn't use any resources. They don't need to use mana. They also can push mobs with some abilities, and they have an ability called Mend, which lets them heal a pretty significant amount of their hit points. So that's all for the video. If you disagree with me or you have more information to add to this, please go ahead and leave a comment below. I actually have my opinions changed a lot by people making very good arguments for each one of these classes. So thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.